We now had several moves in our arsenal, but not enough to survive a fight with Opu Tong. If we're going to stand a chance in the ring, we'll need to venture deep into the jungle and seek out the training camp of the last surviving master of a blood sport once presumed to be extinct. It's our final stop before we step into the ring and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Prottle Saray chain. Old Man River. Leaving Bottom Bang, we headed downriver in search of the ruins of Tanay. I didn't realize it could be so quiet in the jungle. Too quiet. More than 800 years old, Tanay, like Angkor Wat, was once part of the sprawling Khmer Empire. Today, this ancient temple is a training compound for what many believe is the ancestral form of Pradal Saray. It's called Bokator. Developed by Khmer villagers more than 2,000 years ago, there's only one surviving Bokator master on the planet, Grandmaster Sam Kim Sin. Taught Bokator as a boy, San Kin Sin fled Cambodia during the horrors of the Khmer Rouge. He returned in 1992 to discover only five other Bokator masters had survived. As these older masters slowly passed away, Kin Sin combined their systems with his, creating a catalog of over 10,000 techniques, nearly all of which can be put to use in our upcoming fight. Doing something for five years shows dedication. 50 years, and that's a lifestyle. Here's an individual who is so passionate about his homeland's martial art of Bokator that he's taken it upon himself to completely revive the art and drive it forward. The Grand Master began our training with a prayer offering to Brahma, the Hindu god of creation. Though nowadays many Bokator practitioners are Buddhist, early Khmer warriors were Hindu, and Brahma is still the most revered deity in Bokator. But the peace and serenity didn't last. Before the Grand Master would teach us any Bokator moves, he wanted us to get a glimpse of how much intensity his top students brought to their training routine. Cracking coconuts, breaking clay pots in one fell swoop. These guys were the real deal. First up for us came a run around the rugged temple perimeter, hauling 50 pound urns along the way. To prove we could withstand the pain of old school Bokator training, the Grand Master had us shin kick bamboo shafts and slam our elbows into coconuts. The main focus in Bokator conditioning is using your body as a weapon against objects that are harder than your body. That conditions you not only to deliver punishment, but to absorb it and keep moving forward. And the conditioning was just a warm up. Next, we worked with the Dombong Vang staff to prove our reflexes and coordination were up to snuff. And we tossed 20-pound pots and shattered hardened clay vessels with our knuckles and elbows. See how this kind of natural training really forged the Khmer warrior because you had to be super tough. When you use things in the environment like trees, coconuts, even clay pots, you can get cut. It really toughens you up. As dusk set in, the Grand Master invited us inside the temple's ruins and told us the legend of Bokator's genesis. Now is the story of the Bokator. 2,000 years ago, a Khmer village was plagued by a man-eating lion from the forest. Armed with only a small knife and his bare hands, a powerful warrior cornered the lion outside his lair. The, the lion is by right here, so here is his kick, his groin, boom, on the back, die. And he take the lion, go to village. Those people, the people living in this town, they call Le Bok Kata. The Khmer warrior's victory over the lion saved his village and gave this heretofore unnamed martial art a title. Kill the lion? So Bokatao means kill the lion? Yeah. Bokatao is Tao is lion. Bok Bok is mean like this. Oh, Bok, yeah. And Tao is mean lion. Fighting with the lion. Invigorated by Sam Kinsin's tale, Bill and I woke up early the next morning. The Grand Master and his students were already waiting on us. 
it was time to learn the basic fighting principles of Bokator. Similar to Kung Fu, Bokator's techniques are named for various animals. There's the tiger, the snake, and the elephant. Wow. Look at that airborne. Any animal, they have a lot different special technique from them. So we learn from them. See, like tiger, how fast, how strong. And like a snake, you know, like shh. And that got to bite you and poison you. But believe it or not, the most feared Bokator animal form is the dreaded duck. What? What? See the balance, the your hips, and you this, and the same level. Down low. Yeah, down low. Low duck. And kind of low. ironic. It's duck and duck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, want to give it a try, Jay? You got it, Quackers. And he kick on this way. Right. You block this Here. and hold. Boom. Oh. And you have to knee down. Knee down. You knee down. And yeah. yeah. <gasps> good. All right. That's good. I never thought ducks could be so deadly. They're in here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good, good. Yeah. 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 yeah, good. Despite the 100 degree temperature and matching humidity, we continued to drill animal styles into the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Working on timing, distance, yeah, and attack combinations. With each passing hour in the jungle, we could feel our skills improving. We must have done something to win San Kimsin's respect. At the end of the day, the Grand Master led us to a stone altar, where we received a warrior's blessing from a congregation of Buddhist monks. They splashed holy water across our bodies to give us strength, and gave us blessed armbands inscribed with Sanskrit prayers to protect us in our fight. I sure hope they were, because tomorrow, one of us is going to put all our ancient training to the test and go head-to-head -head against a true human weapon. Cambodia had put us through some of the toughest training we'd ever experienced. Now, it was time to put all that pain and suffering to the test in the ring against a four-time Pradal Saray champion. The fight was scheduled at a stadium in downtown Phnom Penh. But our match wasn't the only bout on the fight card. And our opponent, Opu Tong, was already warming up. Even though Opu Tong was smaller than us, he looked fast, powerful, and tough as nails. Opu Tong forged his fighting skills in the gritty slums of Phnom Penh. Going toe to toe with him would definitely be a challenge. I guess he didn't think he was intimidating looking enough without the tattoos. We headed to the locker room. It was time to decide which one of us was going to fight. All this training, man, I am zapped around here. You know, I just want to get in there and mix it up a little bit. I think it's going to be fun. I like getting kicked. I like kicking people. Good luck. All right, man. I got your corner. Yeah, I'm changing. Change. You can't see this. As I was getting taped up, I walked through my plan of attack. Stay tight, stay technical, and avoid getting into a slug 